With us now is DJ Scribble. So excited to have you here. Thank How you. are I'm you? Excited to be here. Yeah, it's so good. We have known one another for a little bit of time now. And one of the things that I'm most impressed uh, with you is that you are super talented, but also you add that extra layer. Like you are someone that adopts and creates and invents technology to make the experience better for your audience. Thank you. What started that passion for you and how does that all work for you? I mean, it's, it's like anything else. I mean, you, you have to evolve with technology as time goes on. Like I've been doing this since 1980, you know, so we started out with, you know, carrying crates of records and, you know, all that stuff to where we couldn't show up with a laptop now and still do the same thing. So if you don't evolve with that technology and you don't move forward, you become a dinosaur and I refuse to do that. Got it. So you always said, okay, what's new? What can yeah, you bring? Yeah, I always try to be on the cusp of new equipment, new technology, new stuff like that. Uh, so some of the things that you're incorporating besides the laptop are what? When you have to come now, what do you bring with you? I mean, I bring the laptop, but I also, you know, I, I'm very big with effects and different things. Like when I do my sets, I, I want to, it's more of a, a production as far as a ride and a journey and how I take them musically ups and downs. And it's like a roller coaster, you know? So for me, when I go in and do something, it, it's, you know, I look at the audience, I look and see what's there, and then I try to take them on a ride. What's the most impressive gig you've ever done for your own self? Well, besides, of course, the celebrity golf outing we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I just got back from um, uh, Jordan. I just played for the troops over there oh, on the Air Force you. Base for July 4th. That was like my biggest thing. When I did the USO, I was the first DJ ever to headline a USO tour. So I went to Iraq during the war and played for the troops. I took Naughty by Nature with me. So when people ask me what's the, the best gig you've ever done, I mean, for me, it was definitely going over there and playing for the troops. And I've played in front of a million people in Times Square, but there was nothing like playing for those guys. It made a women. huge impact, right? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. It's, 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 you know, when you get to go over there and you give them a piece of home and they're sitting there, you know, pooping in the dirt and foxholes and not having the, you know, so when we got there, you know, we wanted to, they tried to put us in like Saddam's palaces and we were like, nah, we want to stay with them. So we stayed in like these things called chews, which is nothing but a container with an air conditioner and a cot about that big, but we didn't care. Right. They were there. Yeah. And I'm, I'm sure that had uh, a huge impact on you. I can oh, see absolutely. in your face. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, when, when I, we did this one base, um, this one fob on the border of Syria and we literally performed in a mess tent, you know, and there was only maybe 70 soldiers on this, on this fob. And when we were done, the CO of that base came up to me, rips his combat patch off his arm. And he says, this has been in a lot of sh He goes, and I want you to have this because you came to see me. I was like, thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, it was very emotional. I mean, it was, to me, it was like, you know, and I come from a military family. My dad was Air Force. I was born on Otis Air Force Base. So I was one signature away from going into the Air Force when my music career took off. Okay. So that's... And talking about your dad, he's a performer, because I was asking you about one of your tats. Yes. And I love that. That's so, really great. So it's funny, because my dad was in a doo-wop group called the Ovations and the Velvetones. That's kind of how I got into music. But he hated hip-hop. He didn't okay. understand it. You know what I mean? <laughs> so the, the Little Red Shoes, um, the Shell Top Adidas... He, he, he tried to cut up all my fat laces one day. No. <laughs> yeah, we wrestled on the floor for it. So, but um, <laughs> he said the song to me um, from uh, Jerry, but uh, Jerry Butler called Little Red Shoes. And that's why I have that on there. I love that. Yeah. I love that. So he was also in the military. Yes. Okay. And so then he performed. Did you, as a little child, did you go watch? I've seen him perform, sure. They, wow. he, it was crazy. He would have like, Johnny Meister and the Brooklyn Bridge would be in my garage. You know, they would all be hanging out, singing in the garage, you know, doo-wop and everything. So it, uh, you know, I grew up all around it. You know, now, can it, you sing at all? I used to be able to. Really? Yeah. Like, and what was your go-to, like, karaoke I would sing song? with my dad. Okay. Sometimes, but, uh, What you was know, your favorite song that you sang? <clears throat> I mean, to, to me, um, Unchained Melody was a big one for my dad. Um... What's up? What's the, this, the Little Red Shoes was another one. But, I mean, I love doo-wop. I grew up with it. On Sunday nights, you weren't allowed to put any other radio station on but Don K. Rian 101, you know, at right. that time with the doo-wop shop. Right. So I was... Doo-wop, hip-hop. I mean, yeah. I don't know. There's a connection. That's what I said. And his, right. I said, why do you hate hip-hop? He, right. he just didn't understand it. The first time my father ever saw me perform, which was way... I was already DJing almost 15 years, was when I did the Broadway show with Bill Irwin at the New Victory Theater. And that's the first time my dad saw me perform and he finally got it oh yeah that's really awesome yeah. uh what are you hoping to bring tonight to the audience 
just let them have cut loose and have fun. I mean, I'm going to be all over. I'm going to play everything from hip hop, rock, this, everything. Because you know, you got such a versatile group here. Yeah. So you know, you got to give a little, give them a little something. Yeah, and when you're behind there, are you dancing? Are you like... Yeah, of course. Yeah. I'm always into it. I, I don't care if there's... I watch you, too. I because... don't care if there's five people or right. 5,000. I'm, I'm putting on my show. Yeah, that's how I feel about acting. There was one time I was doing a, a theater play on the south shore of Long Island. Um, it was terrible weather, it was a snowstorm. It was at Author's Playhouse, actually, in Bayshore. And... Um, it, it, there weren't that many people. There were like 10. And I'm like, that's okay. The show still goes that's right. on, right? Still, those 10 goes... people that showed up, paid their money, they want to see you give 100%. So you give 100%. And thank you for waking up early so that you could be here with Always. us today. I wouldn't <laughs> miss this for the world. Big Daddy calls me. I'm like, where do I got to be and what time? <laughs> DJ Scribble. That's me. Woohoo! <laughs> Stay tuned. We've been living it up right here.